which grant type should I use? This uh, depends on the kind of application you're building. Uh, here I classified the applications into four categories, native, single page, server page, and background. Native apps, the ones which run on the desktop or on the phone of the user, like Android applications, iOS application, WPF applications, Windows Forms, um, Swing-based applications, etc. Single page applications which uh, gets downloaded from the servers, then run directly on the browsers built based on JavaScript platforms like Angular, React, etc. Or then server pages, which are applications which emit HTML and then run on the browsers. Right? So applications like JSP, servlets, PHP, Cold Fusion, Python, it falls into this bucket. The last type, applications which run on the server and there is no user interactions with those applications. So which grant type you use depends on the kind of application. So four types of applications which we classified needs different grant types on depending on the context of usage. I created a small flowchart to help you make that decision. So the first category is whether the application is on running on server, not on the client or the user's machine, not on the user's machine, it's running on the server. And it does not have end users is a second classification. So that means we are talking about the background applications. If it's running in the background, the choice is client credentials. Let's see how the client credentials work. In case of client credentials, the application has a secret and uh, it passes the secret to the identity server, ID and secret. And in return, you get an access token, right? And then it uses the access token to um, communicate with the API server. Uh, let's also have a look at the request response pattern. Um, the request has the client ID and secret as we saw in the diagram. And in response, you get the access token. So that's the first model. If there is no user interaction and if it's a background application, it's a B2B scenario, client credential is the protocol to be used. Let's look at the uh, second scenario. If it has end users, then what's the case, right? If it has end users and if it is highly trusted, if the application is highly trusted by the user, okay? If the application is, um, is trusted very strongly by users, right? Then we use password as the mechanism. So how does password work? The user can give the username and password directly to application. Application takes this uh, username and password and adds its own secret and sends it to the identity server. In return, it gets an access token. Um, it uses the access token to communicate with the API. Okay. So in this case, both are authenticated, the application and the user. Um, uh, but the application should be highly trusted because the application is taking the credentials from the user on his behalf. Only then you can use it. Uh, let's see the request response. The request uh, looks like um, you're passing the client ID and secret and then username and password. Pass these information to the identity server and in response it gives you an access token. Okay. So we saw two models. One is client credentials for background applications. Uh, password for server applications where users fully trust this application and is ready to give the password to the app directly. In case the user is not willing to give his password to the app directly, then we use authorization code approach. So in authorization code, the user gives his password directly to the identity server. Right? Uh, the application gives his secret to the identity server. So both are authenticated, they authenticate directly with the identity server, right? Let's see the entire flow. The user makes a request to the application that's redirected to the identity server. Identity server authenticates the user. Once he authenticates the user, an authorization code is issued and redirected back to the application with the authorization code. The application sends a request to the identity server with the authorization code and client secret. 
um, if the authorization code is valid and the client ID and secret is valid, it's issued an access token. So now by step nine, both the user and the application are authenticated. Uh, the access token can be used to access the API. If you see the request response pattern, so you're hitting the identity server um, with the client ID and user gets authenticated after that. And once user is authenticated, you, you are issued an authorization code. The authorization code can be um, um, exchanged for an access token. So you can see the application using authorization code and the secret. In response, you get actually an access token. Right? There are two ways of authentication. One is called a two-legged approach, another one is a three-legged approach. So in a two-legged approach, the user only speaks to applications and never speaks to the identity store directly, right? Whereas in a three-legged approach, the user speaks to the identity server directly and gets authenticated and then pass the access token to the application for access, right? The first two, what we saw was more from a two-legged approach, whereas the third one, the authorization code, is a three-legged approach. In fact, the next two, what we are going to see is also based on a three-legged approach. So, we saw three types of authentication so far, client credentials, password, and authorization code. Again, to summarize, for background applications, client credentials, applications running on server, which are highly trusted password, applications running on server, but user is not willing to give us password directly to the application, then use authorization code. So that's all the cases of applications running on a server. Now, if application is running on the a user's machine on the edge, then what's your authentication mechanism? So one of the popular authentication mechanism is implicit. Let's look at how implicit authentication works. Um, if you look at the flow, it looks very much similar to most parts of authorization code with few steps missing. Um, so if you look at the initial seven steps, it's same as authorization code. You make a request, you're redirected, the user is getting authenticated, you're issued an access token. Now if you see in authorization code, you are issued an auth code, but here you're directly issued an access token, which you can use to um, access the API directly. Um, so what happened to the other part, right? Um, the step eight and nine, which we had before. So the application had a, client secret in the author authorization code mode. Um, and now since this application is living on the edge, right? it could be a browser based or it could be native also. Okay, It's on the edge, sitting in the edge. So you cannot manage secrets. right? So since applications can't manage secret, we can't you do that step. So it just skips those steps. So application is not really uh, authenticated. It's just the user being authenticated. So there is a lot of drawbacks using implicit. It could be hacked. So you must be careful using implicit because only user is getting authenticated and malicious application can misuse it. Uh, again, to see your request response pattern, you have client ID, you have a request being sent, right? In response, you would actually get the um, access token directly, right? Once you're authenticated, okay? So that's the... Uh, implicit approach and one more way to look at it is when you talk about implicit it's only client getting authenticated the application is not getting authenticated when you talk about client credentials only the app is getting authenticated right when you talk about password authorization code or with and without pk pixie it's mutual authentication user is also getting authenticated even the application is getting authenticated so um, the first one you should be really careful, right? The application is not authenticated properly. So now we have more, more or less have a full blown picture here, okay? Let's try to understand this. So if the application is on the edge on user's machine, is it a web page application, single page application or native? If it's native, we have a new authorization code um, grant type um, where it's 
a modified version of authorization code called authorization code pixie right uh, this works uh, much safer than using implicit um, without a necessity for a client secret okay so if you take authorization code it needs a client secret whereas authorization code pixie works without a client secret and still validates the application okay that's advantage even for sp application you prefer to use authorization code with pixie in case you don't have browser support for web crypto in only that case you would fall back to implicit which is slightly a little more risky so anything on the edge we prefer to use authorization code with pixie on the server uh, it could be a comp any one of these three depending on the category of application what we discussed we discussed uh, authorization code client credentials password implicit we are left out with uh, authorization code pixie let's have a look at how authorization code pixie works almost similar has authorization code with small changes because no client secret okay let's see the flow the user makes a request to the application um, the application generates a code verifier hashes the code verifier which we call the code challenge sends the code challenge to the browser browser forwards that request to identity server then gets it user gets authenticated that's step number five and six and once user is authenticated the uh, code challenge is stored with uh, the auth code so auth code is mapped to the code challenge and kept on the identity server and the auth code is returned to the browser and it's forwarded to the application okay so now at this point the user is authenticated now the application uh, uh, takes the code verifier and sends it to the uh, identity server along with the auth code okay on the server side the code verifier is hashed and compared against the code challenge which is kept for this particular auth code if that matches then an access token is issued okay the application access the api using the access token okay the the usage of code verifier removes the necessity of uh, having a client secret so to summarize uh, depending on the type of application where you do native single page server page or background you have to choose the appropriate grant type for native use auth code with pixie with single page again pixie but if browsers don't have support and you're supporting old browsers implicit but you have a security risk on server pages um, depending on whether the user is willing to give his password to the app or user would like to directly get authenticated with the identity server we use password or authorization code for background applications no user verification so client credentials that summarizes uh, the grant types i hope you were able to understand the grant types clearly thank you